I got to confess that I really do like hollies. I like them. I can't get away from it. I really do like them. I know they're prickly, and I know they are annoying. You know, when you're sweeping up the old leaves and things. But they do give you something all year round. You get the foliage, you get berries. Some of them have a scent. But you know, we get obsessed with flowers. I had a woman ring me up this morning and said, have you got a Budleyer? I don't know where they started putting J's instead of I and A. But anyway, have you got a Budleyer? Black Knight. I said, yeah, I've got one of them. Come over to Eggleston and get one. And she said, now, how long will it flower for? Because I want lots of flowers. I said, well, it'll flower for a month or so. And she was like, she weren't very happy. I said, well, how long do you want it? Well, I want something that's going to flower all summer long. I said, well, perhaps you'd be better off with bedding plants. No, I want shrubs. And I went through a whole list of shrubs. And if they didn't flower for more than a month, I just didn't want them. So in the end, I just said, well, it ain't no good you get some plastic ones. Or go on to www.virtualgarden or whatever it is. Have a pretend one. Hmm. Drives me around a bend, you know. Anyway, I'm getting away from all that. This is one of my favourites. This is Ilex Lichtenthalii. I'll show you why it's my favourite. Here is Ilex Lichtenthalii. Comes from Austria. Austrian type of uh, species of holly. Really, really nice. I think if I had to choose just one holly, shrubby holly, this would be it. It doesn't make a big tree, but it's absolutely beautiful. Covered in the big red berries, almost the size of a, a marble that you would have played with as a kid in the playground. You probably can't play with them these days. Probably dangerous, you might swallow one. Somebody told me that they banned flapjacks because they were triangular and dangerous. What sort of arsehole makes things like that? But these squares have corners on them. And the good thing about Lichtenthalii is it's a natural breaker. By that, I mean that it breaks and forms a bush. And most plants, if you let them go, they'll go straight up. And I know I've gone on about this before. But uh, this is um, why we do stopping or pinching. We take out the growing tip if we want a nice bushy shrub. We don't let it go right up. So uh, sometimes it's called pinching, sometimes it's called stopping. Whatever it is, it's the same job. And it's all about apical dominance. And that is one of the most important things which you'll hear me talk about over and over again because it's really worth understanding. Hmm. Let's have a little look more. I've got some uh, other things you ought to maybe look at. Now somewhere under here in what we would call the spring garden so I'm not sure where spring comes from not this year are all my perennials. I'm just about sick of filming snowy landscapes. But this morning it gives me a good opportunity with the white background to show you how you develop a spur system. For those of you that are not interested in growing fruit trees, particularly in the restricted forms like these stepovers, you might as well switch off now. But for those of you that have watched the um, other Plantsman's Corner video on growing step over apples where I've explained to you that you must reduce the lead growths. This is the reason why. This is what we call a spur system. You can see all along this stem spurs. Short pieces of branch, little branchlets that are multi-branched. And this spur system is lovely. This is what has all the flower, all the blossom, and consequently all the fruit. That's why the analogy I give of having a hosepipe 
and making holes along it every few inches and then turning it on and putting your finger in the end is about exactly the same as growing these apple trees. When you cut off the end of a lead shoot, all the other shoots that would have been here, all these buds, they all try to become the lead shoot. It's what we call apical dominance. And by activating all of those buds, you can develop these spurs. If you just take your lead growth along right to the end of your wall or at the end of your wires, there's no, nothing inspires these young buds into growth. This may sound a little bit techy, but it's the only way that you should do it. An apical dominance is probably one of the most important things there are in pruning. Understand that, how it works and how different plants sort of work with it. They can just about train anything. It ain't hard. It ain't scientific. It's just a question of finding the patience of developing the spurs. It's not all about length. It's not all about size. <laughs> it's about developing the buds. I can feel something smutty coming on about that comment. Right. Buggers. There are other methods, or we use the same method for other plants. If we look at these young maples, you can see with one of these, I've cut the, the stem off. These were about oh, two foot tall. But I want to develop them as bushy plants. So by cutting the top off, all along these nodes, here, 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 and there, the shoots will develop because they'll all want to be the dominant shoot and there I'll get a bushier plant. If I wanted a single stem plant, uh, say a half standard or a standard, I wouldn't do that. I would just keep it going up and then when it got to the height that I wanted, I would uh, just um, cut it off there. It's just that it sets you back a bit of time. The temptation for a nurseryman is to grow it as quickly as possible. Bedding plants, for example, are routinely stopped, pinched. It's the same process because you're using the pinching out of the growing point to develop a much bushier plant. Same with just a lot of young shrubs. And on taller plants like this holly, by clipping it or pinching it back, we can develop a much bushier specimen. Sometimes uh, hollies can get quite rangy, leggy, so just clipping. But very often you don't want to clip because you lose a lot of berries if you clip all over. So just by going around a plant and pinching out the, the growths, the, the, the lead shoots, you often get yourself a much finer, bushier plant. And you can keep it restricted as well. This is uh, Ilex Rubicolis aurea. You can see it's grown on a, on a stem. Now that wouldn't have been pinched out till it got to about six feet. And then the top five or six buds were left to develop. These would have grown about a foot or so. And then they'd have been pinched out again. And you just keep a shape like that. Again, it's all about apical dominance. Understand that and you're just 90% of the way there with all pruning or training. I was gonna show you some bays, but at the moment, they're under two or three feet of snow. <sighs> uh, 
There's the old girl. Come on, Molly. You ain't dead yet, you're fine. Best friend I ever had, aren't you? Dragon breath stinks like a bloody pea. Still the best friend I ever had. I have actually disinfected this shade house. That was three weeks ago, four weeks ago, when there was a fine day. It snowed like hell ever since. Some of my rarest plants are hidden under there for the last month. Getting back to those little Japanese maples. There is the one I stopped. Well, I stopped a lot of them. You can see here, they're about six, eight inches tall. If I hadn't done that in a year's time, they'd have been this long. One single straight stem. But by cutting them back, by reducing them, this is where it was cut back to a year ago. And you can see all of these shoots have started to work. They become active and you've got a nice bushy little plant. This is uh, a Japanese maple called Katsura. And um, it sells on site in the spring when it's, it's in leaf. It really is a spring leafing, leafing uh, maple. Bright gold, beautiful thing. So I know they think when I'm cutting them back, they think silly old soddies as daft as a bag of bollocks. Well, I ain't, because I want plants like that. Nice. That's about it, I think, on that subject. And they're paying Goodbye. 10 or 15 pounds for it. Um, this is a little Japanese maple called Katsura. It sells on site in the spring when it's in, in flower. No, they don't have flowers, do they? When it's got bloody leaves on, you yeah, silly old fucker. You daft old sod. <laughs>